So welcome back to this week's review of Shogun. And with this video, I'm just going to give my quick thoughts on the episode, and then later on this week, I'll give you the full spoiler review. So now we're on episode 6, and this means we're more than halfway through the series. And things are really starting to ramp up. There's talks of All Out Battle, Crimson Skies, but we're not quite there yet. And if you had a guess that an episode titled Ladies of the Willow World would mostly feature stories of women, then you'd probably be right. And here we get a lot more of the backstory of both Mariko and Lady Oshiba. And we find out that both of these women are really just tragic characters. And I thought these backstories were interesting, but it is a little confusing with how they show it. Because randomly throughout the episode they spread out each of the flashbacks. And I don't get why shows or movies never just show the entire flashback. I guess they just want to keep us guessing. But what we're starting to see with this episode is that Lady Oshiba really is gearing up to be the true villain of the series. And Ishido is dangerous, but he's more predictable. And he's not feared like Lady Oshiba is. And we're seeing that even the Portuguese are afraid of her. And they're even considering siding with Turanaga. Child of a murdered Busho. The only consort to give the Taiko an heir. And she despises the church. And like I said, this episode really is just all about the woman of the show. Compliment the way she poured your sake. It is considered a rare art. And we also get Kiku. And she's an insanely expensive courtesan or prostitute or whatever you want to call it. Basically, she's a sex worker. And we're told that most men can't even afford her. And we did briefly see her in one of the first episodes. This is that weird scene with Yabushige and his boy toy, I guess. And it's pretty obvious that Yabushige's nephew Omi is in love with Kiku. And this might actually cause some trouble for John because Toranaga gifts Kiku to John for one night. And just repeatedly throughout the episode, we can see that Omi is in the background and he's jealous. He keeps bringing up how Toranaga is giving John all these gifts. And we know that something eventually is going to happen with this. And both John and Omi's relationship didn't exactly start out well. So, things might get ugly. But the Kiku scene actually wasn't as explicit as I was expecting. And if this actually was the Game of Drones clone that we're repeatedly told it is, then this would have been a 20 minute weird porn session. And actually the novel too was pretty explicit. So it was really set up for the show to go all out. And the novel's pretty crazy because in that, Kiku shows John her sex dungeon. And it's actually filled with sex toys. Oh, don't worry. It's not a threat to you. And we're told that it's for times when men can't satisfy women and that all women have these toys. This is about physical pleasure. Which it is. And for some reason, this is where they decided to have John just get an epiphany that Japan is amazing and better than his home country. And he becomes a true weeb at this moment. The purity of a woman! And I'm kind of glad that they skipped over this. Honestly, I didn't really want to see all that. And something tells me that James Clavell just really enjoyed fantasizing about Japan in this way. Most come here to escape from boredom or pain. But I'll say for once, Mariko did a pretty good job in this episode. And you could actually sense that there is some sexual frustration at this moment. And we could just see that both of them have feelings for each other. Anyway, this episode is a little slow. There wasn't much action or violence. There was a few beheadings though, so I'll give it that, but it was mainly just a human drama. And we did get some flashbacks that told us a lot about some of the characters. And I saw some people joke that the show should be called She-Gun. This mainly has to do with Mariko. And this episode is dedicated for them. 
And like I said, just judging by the title of the episode, you could tell that's what they were going for. Girl power. I would advise against speaking out of turn. But I will say it was a needed episode because it did have a lot of character development. And it also was needed just to set up the action that's gonna happen soon. And once again, it just ends with war on the horizon. And is it me or does every episode end that way? We'll see if next episode actually is a war. I think it's just more so a means to get us excited for the next week. Anyway, that was episode 6. Hopefully soon we could get some Crimson Skies. And don't forget to tune in later this week. I'll have my full spoiler review up. I'll go into the episode in a lot more detail. Anyway, if you like my content, you can support me by my Patreon. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, and like always, thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.